Welcome back to The Bible Says What? Today I will summarize Deuteronomy chapter 2, where Moses continued his history lesson teaching the surviving generation of the people of Israel. Moses reminded the people of Israel what recently happened. Moses said, Remember, just a few years ago, the last remaining people who rebelled against the Lord died off. Then we were free to continue on to the promised land. We went through the land of Esau and Lot. Remember I told you that God has given you land, but specific land, not all of it is yours. God has also promised land to Esau and his children and Lot and his children. God gave me instructions on what we needed to do on our way. He told me, you will pass through the territory of your brothers, the sons of Esau, who live in Seir. They will be afraid of you. Be very careful not to provoke them. I have not given you any of their land. You will buy food and water from them and bless them when you go through. So the whole group of people went north and went through the land of Esau and bought their food and water and blessed their relatives in that land. Moses continued, remember after you went through that land, you came upon the wilderness of Moab. God told me that no one was permitted to harass the people of Moab, nor provoke them to war. None of their land would be given to you because he has given it to the sons of Lot as their possession. Now at this point, Moses made a comment in the text he was writing, explaining something out of the ordinary. Moses wrote that the land they went into a couple years prior used to be filled with a group of giants called the Emim. This giant race was just as tall as the Anakim giants. The people of both of these groups were called Rephaim by most people, but the Moabites made a further distinction for the ones in their land and called them Emim. And the Ammonites called them Zemzumim. Moses also mentioned the sons of Esau fought against a people group called the Horites in Seir and were victorious and settled in their land, just like the sons of Israel would do when they arrived in their promised land. God gave Jacob and Esau both land, but the history of how the sons of Esau went into their promised land was not described as thoroughly as how the sons of Israel went into theirs. Moses continued with his history lesson. Remember when I sent messengers to Sihon, king of Heshbon, with a message saying, please let us pass through your land in peace, just like how we went through Esau's land in Seir? We will buy food and water from you. But God hardened Sihon's spirit, and he raced out to kill us with his army of giants. The Lord told me not to fear, and that he has given all of King Sion's land to the Israelites. And if you recall, we easily defeated him and his army in battle. We killed all the giants, to include men, women, and children of every city in his land, and left no survivor. We took every city with their high-walled defenses, and we kept all the animals and riches of those cities. And from that day on, God put a fear and feeling of dread in the surrounding nations when they heard about us defeating that strong army. The most important verse in this chapter is Deuteronomy 2.7, which states, For the Lord thy God hath blessed thee in all the works of thy hands. He knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness. These forty years the Lord thy God hath been with thee, and thou hast lacked nothing. The thing I think the Lord wants us to understand after reading this chapter is that he promised Abraham and his children an inheritance of land. The Old Testament provides many details on how Israel, formerly called Jacob, and his sons acquired their land, but it does not provide many details on how the people of Esau, Jacob's brother, acquired his land. We also see that God promised Lot and his children land as well, but this promise was not explained much at all in Scripture. The Lord wants us to see that he is able to provide everything he promised to those who love him. He does not limit himself to making promises only to the people recorded in biblical history. God promised Abraham and his children an inheritance. 
But God also gave Lot an inheritance too. And Lot was not one of Abraham's sons. Has God given you an inheritance? If he adopts you as one of his children, he certainly will. Have you been adopted yet? God is asking if you would like to be part of his family even right now. Why don't you go ahead and do it? Repent for your sin and turn to the Lord for salvation today. Jesus humbled himself and died on a cross as my substitute and your substitute, and the Father raised Jesus from the dead. God said that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that the Father raised Jesus from the dead, you would be saved. Why don't you do that right now? And thanks for watching the Deuteronomy chapter 2 episode. If you enjoyed it, please share it with someone. If you want to join me on this long video journey, feel free to subscribe to the channel. See you next time.